Hi folks, welcome to a very special edition of Diplomacy Academy. On Memorial Day weekend, David Hood held a virtual DixieCon, the first event of its kind at the scale at which it was held. Over 80 players from all around the world participated in two games of diplomacy, one in the morning, one in the evening. Siobhan Nolan, Brandon Fogel, and I participated in a live stream commentary of those games. In these special editions of Diplomacy Academy, I'm packaging those games together so you don't have to sit through the whole 11 hours of our stream to follow one game. Instead, you can go through the commentary game by game. Some games weren't finished by the time we stopped recording in the morning, and I had to drop out before all the games were finished in the evening. So enjoy, welcome to some very special guests who joined the broadcast, and as always, uh, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks. I'm Chris Martin, and I'll stab you soon. All right. Without further ado then, let us bring up some games. So I will introduce everyone to the interface that we have developed for this. Uh, we have all 11 games um, uh, on this board uh, in a list and we've color coded them to help us keep them apart. Uh, each game is coded by a letter. The one stands for uh, round one and then you've got A through K. And then each one also has a name, um, which uh, the meaning of which is probably not immediately obvious to everyone watching. It was not to us, um, but with a little sleuthing, we've figured it out, and uh, uh, we'll we'll get around to discussing that at some point. Um, there's uh, two things to see here, though. Uh, first, we've got the time to the next deadline, and this tells you what the next deadline is um, for the players, uh, along with the current uh, uh, down, uh, countdown. Um, but then we also have the latest season that we have looked at. So we're going to, um, since we can't look at all 11 games uh, at once or even uh, try to keep up to uh, speed with them all um, uh, in real time, we're going to look at them uh, season by season, probably a year at a time. And this will keep track of what we've looked at and how far along in each game we are. Um, so with that, uh, let us, uh, so first what we're going to do um, is we're going to uh, take a browse through all 11 spring 01s. Uh, and that will help us introduce us to each of the players and each of the games, and also uh, just give us a sense of how each game is kicking off. And then we'll probably focus more on some games than on others, uh, depending on what happens. Uh, so let's start out. So first of all, in board 1A, title. Oh, Brandon, I'm sorry, just a real quick point. Uh, in the comments, Matt Shields asks, are you guys posting the links to the Backstabber so that we could go and browse these games? And we aren't. We just ask you to be patient. Uh, there's a lot going on and we're gonna run through them here. So you'll have to just sort of wait and watch with us as we work through them. And I'm, I'm sure David Hood, will, the, uh, the organizer of the tournament, will make all of those links available later at some point. Yeah. Um, so, all right, let's dive in. So uh, the first board, 1A, is called Cherokees. And uh, the players are Jeff Dornecki in Austria, Scott Joffrey in England, William Perkowitz in France, Joseph Wheeler in Germany, who we all know and love, uh, Klaas de Graaf uh, in Italy, who is um, a Dutch player. I've met him before. Philip Weissert in Russia, and uh, John Anderson, the former independent presidential candidate from the 1980 election in Turkey. That's verified, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Blue check mark and everything. I think Ross Perot uh, is going to be joining us from the, the Great Beyond later. Um, okay, let us look at what happened here. A couple things jump out. First of all, we've got uh, Turkey with no orders whatsoever. Um, do we have uh, uh, do we have any intel on that, uh, Chris? This is not one of the games you're. Having, is that... That's not one of my games. Uh, they did show back up and get back into the game, though. So, so okay. it seems like just a misorder. Yep. All right. So, uh, what what stands out to you guys here on this board, Chris? Let's go to you first. Uh, just super quick, France supports themselves to Burgundy, but then allows England to go into the Channel, which England does. But England doesn't go Liverpool to Wales; they go Liverpool to Eddie. So. Uh, it's a, a threatening opening for France, but not uh, super bad because the army went north. And then Germany wastes the time in Munich going to Burgundy, but then Italy is in Trillia. Uh, those are the main things, that and the NMR, and Russia opening north. 
So if you're England, this feels like, uh, would you say this is a sort of hedging bets uh, strategy? How would you interpret the, the combination of opening to the channel and to Edinburgh? Uh, if you're opening to the channel, then Yorkshire and Edinburgh are equivalent because you can only convoy through the North Sea, right? So uh, that doesn't really make a difference one way or the other. And Siobhan, do you see anything uh, else on this board worth commenting? No, um, for me, the English move of the channel just tells me that I think he was really anxious that France was going to go there. I don't think he really necessarily wanted to be there, but that's just my quick read. And then, yeah, so we'll, this will be an interesting uh, uh, Western um, uh, sphere to come back and, and see how it evolves. Uh, one other point of note, Venice move, move, opens to Tyrolia, which is popular among um, the hobby these days. Uh, isn't necessarily uh, anti anyone, but it is definitely pro Italy in that it gives him uh, lots of options for the fall. I'll do the setup and then I'll pass it to you, Siobhan. So, uh, Joe Wheeler in Germany and uh, John Anderson, presidential candidate. Um, Who is dead and didn't move because he's dead. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the NMR was the big big deal here. Another uh, channel opening for England, and here you go. Yeah, Joe Wheeler, we're talking about your game right now. I see you in the comments. Um, okay, so England doesn't take Norway, tries for Holland and gets bounced. Denmark to Norway. Um, miss order? Question mark. Um, Turkey takes the Black Sea and goes to Armenia. Um, so delayed sunstorm, I guess, again. Yeah. And Italy convoys to Tunis. All right. Uh, Chris, take us through builds and spring. So the uh, German build of the fleet stands out to me there. Uh, seems to me he's not too worried about England and Holland, given that Russia has opened north. Russia now has other problems. England has made no friends. Uh, expect him to get smacked down pretty hard. Uh, otherwise, two armies and a fleet, and uh, oh, fleet sev, second fleet sev. Yeah. Uh, ill for Turkey, who did not build. Yep, yet. because of the NMR in spring. And, and Philip is uh, an excellent, excellent player. Uh, don't expect him to show any mercy here. <laughs> All right. He guesses right. That's, uh, yeah. that's the first yep. thing. Um, Chris, this is you. Ah, okay, so Russia defends Romania, as expected, forces the Black Sea, forces Norway against no opposition. Huh. England convoys optimistically into Holland, but we'll lose it in the fall. <laughs> um, and England doesn't make it to the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, uh, um, so Apulia, Naples to Apulia, with Tunis signaling, hey, I'm going back to Apulia, while the Ionian makes it to the Aegean. Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> uh, Italy, Klaas... Uh, talk to me, baby. What are you thinking here? Yeah, move over. Move on. <laughs> with, uh, with no fleets down here, this makes no sense. Oh, wow. Uh, follow to the Ionian in there. Oh, and he does. Okay. It was just, he, he might have misordered. Those spaces can be small. He's doing it on his phone. You can see that. Yeah. Well, but combined with uh, the move to the gene. Um, but anyway, so, okay, so this is me, right? Yep. So, um, of note here, uh, France uh, looks like goes full for the. Uh, for an FG here, um, although that's easily reversible. Austria and Italy uh, sort of get their acts together. Austria looks like the bigger partner here. And Russia guesses right against um, against uh, Austria. Mm -hmm. yeah. And picks up Norway with an army in Sweden. This is a very nice turn for Russia. Um, I love it. He may end, and he gets uh, Turkey off of his back. So this is, uh, despite the inability, with the fleet in Romania, he's going to have trouble moving forward. But uh, uh, he's looking very from here to rotate, though, right? Yeah. Yep. Um, okay, so uh, Sivan, you're up. Winner and a whole lot of armies. <laughs> There's not a single fleet build here. That's all there is um, to say about that. <laughs> so, and let's see how that does for everyone. A whole lot of non movement in the east. Turkey goes to the black, but meh. Um, Italy takes Greece. Great. And I mean, okay, we're going to be chasing that Norwegian fleet around for a while. All right, Chris, you're up. Uh, Russia plays the safety. Um, and like, yeah, I guess what England, you get nothing. Nothing! Nothing um, for you. 
And I don't necessarily know that I like Sev2 rum here, um, with rum being supported to hold, but I guess you're not going to the Black Sea. Um, uh, wow, this is just some solid defense. What's going on? So Italy takes Greece. Austria figures out that Italy and Germany are working against them. Psychic defense, Austria. Wow. wow. That's okay. just uh, um, um, Jeff Gornicki, a longtime Portland player. Uh, mm -hmm. Great set of moves there from Austria. Doesn't bode well for him, mind you, but a great set of moves. This is a, this is a concrete turn, huh? Everything yeah. is just stuck. Uh, yeah. Wait. Builds and uh, builds in the spring for me. Builds in the spring for me. So uh, yeah, only thing of note here was that uh, Austria transferred a unit over to Italy, who puts down an army in Rome, um, despite the presence of a French army in Piedmont. All right. Okay. Which is going around? Yep. Mm -hmm. Here we have uh, Russia setting up to Russia getting some freedom, a little breathing room, thanks to Austria getting. Um, some pressure on its uh, opposite side. And Turkey, Turkey sets up for a possible build after NMRing in 1901. Yeah, nice recovery. Awesome. Um, yeah, Turkey will get that build. Um, Rush takes Vienna as Austria just runs away. Um, sorry, my monitor. Um, da -da -da -da. MAO to Gascony. Because uh, of Burgundy, the army oh, of Burgundy. Burgundy, you're right, thank you. Yep, and a whole lot of nothing around Burgundy. Yeah, trying to blow it up and failing. Oh, yep. yeah. Boy, that would have been sweet if he'd managed to blow it up and, or pushed it back to Munich and kept Belgium. Yep. yep. Okay, yeah. so um, okay. I'm liking Russia's position. Oh, yeah, I mean, how could you not, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I like it too. <laughs> I mean, you're Russia. You got nothing between Warsaw and Paris, but German army Burgundy. Uh, I guess you're in the way there, too. Austria is on the ropes. Hey, Italy, guess what happens when you run in on... Anyway, we had that conversation. <laughs> Turkey builds the fleet, and um, this is Russia's game to lose. Indeed. Yep. Yep. Oh, the famous Eddie Syria move. Yeah, yep. I'm setting a, the convoy isn't there yet, but he's setting up. Okay. All right, Chris, this is your turn. Chris, you're uh, yeah. oh, Sorry, okay. Uh, Germany co goes back to Denmark uh, thinking he's going to face a threat. Um, and uh, Russia sets up, forces the Black Sea, puts the army down there. Uh, <laughs> Italy's still doing his best to try and run in on Austria. Wow. Uh, with British help, not for nothing. Um, but he doesn't cut the port in Trieste, so it doesn't work. Yeah, he, he made his choice, and he's sticking yeah. with it. Uh, Fleet Gascony holds once again, trying to get... Well, he does kick him out of Burgundy. And okay. Austria. At the, yeah. but, but it does cost him Belgium to do it. Yeah. Yes, it does. And uh, as a piff as well. This this is a this is a tactical error, it seems to me. You'd want to move up, have Pick be the mover here. And give... Uh, uh, have the retreat here. available if you need it, yeah. Uh, okay, in the fall, Edinburgh continues its quixotic desire to end up on the other side of the map. Yeah. Um, hopefully, maybe we will see it happen one day. Um, but uh, England finally loses north. Um, yeah. Or I think Germany was in there before. But let's yeah. say Russia finally gets into north, which um, is, seemed to be inevitable. Uh, a dosi -si do in the east leads to <laughs> Turkey in the Black Sea. This might be arranged, though, uh, to, to move the Russian fleet out. I'll be interested to see what happens in, uh, in the hmm. fall. And uh, poor Turk. Well, no, we got uh, Russia pulling uh, Serbia into uh, Bulgaria. Yeah, that was a stab, and it worked. Once again, you know, um, if you're going to go for it, you know, go for it. Yeah, but I, I think uh, Russia outsmarted himself here. He's going to see this fleet blown up, um, I believe. Depending on what depending on what Italy does here. Okay. Um, builds and spring, Siobhan. Okay. Um, again, the theme of building armies continues. Army Warsaw, Army Berlin, and Turkey picks up a GM. Let's just... 
Oh, that was false. So Russia was getting Khan. Ah. And, yeah, uh, no, that's what I meant about that. That's why you do it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, no, so this, this worked out really well for Russia. Rogue is sitting on 10, and um, yeah, we're continuing with the theme of it's Phillips to lose. Russia is a solo possibility from here, yeah? Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Would, you, yeah. would you have rather seen the uh, the fleet come into Nor Norway here? <coughs> then Barents? No. No, you can't leave Barents, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Not yet. Yeah, you're coming into the North Sea. You put that army in there. That way Norwegian can't sneak behind you. Yeah. Um, then you can support. You can come up. You can come over. But you don't want to let Italy sneak in pirate behind you. Yeah, he made the mistake once earlier of allowing Norwegian to sneak into Barrens, and he's not going to let it happen again. But now you have to, well, I guess he's not building up here yet, so he's just going to throw But uh, Germany builds in uh, Berlin here. Yeah, correctly <laughs> anticipate. Well, I mean, the fleet, fleet would have been a better build there, but he's got to be like, guys, guys, look at Russia. you got to lay off here. Um, so, yeah. it's like, anytime you want to. All right, Siobhan, take us into the spring. Okay, so Germany, as expected, rightfully just moves full east, um, hoping, um, possibly wrongly, because he's losing Belgium behind him, whether or not that's planned is a whole different conversation. Um, takes Sweden, Russia loses north, a whole little dance in the southeast, um, taking black. Yeah. And super everybody mobilizes. Super optimistic hold in Warsaw. Yes. <laughs> that Germany wouldn't uh, wouldn't come yeah. for him. Yeah. yeah. So everyone's mobilizing against him, but I still think he's, he's got a good chance here. All right. Yeah, Russia decides he needs an ally. Helps Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, Italy takes Khan. Russia gets Serbia here, but loses Warsaw and Sweden. So Russia's pulling, oh, but gets Denmark. So he's only pulling one. Still. Yeah. And France stabs England. Uh, uh, France convoys to London, takes up London and Belgium. Boom! Oh, he takes Belgium as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. Stabs oh. England. Nice. So Germany doesn't get a build, and Russia's solo chances just increase significantly, yeah? Uh, depends on what he has to pull here, right? What is yeah. Italy here, right? Just is the strategic situation of the West being a mess. Um, yeah, that continues. But he, but you know, when you've got armies coming at you in the middle as Russia, you got problems. Yeah, uh, it's hard for him to deal with those and hold the Austrian centers. Um, yeah, that's why he really had to bounce one of these here. Yeah, just he needed to one of those. Yep. 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 Okay. Um, who's turn? Is it my turn now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've got uh, fleets disappearing in the south, um, and, the and a fleet in the north. No. I. I still actually don't discount, I still like Russia, um, even though they're a bit spread out here, but uh, with France with France hitting people from behind, I, I would rather be on the Russian side of this line here. Uh, Russia retakes Sweden, lo loses Denmark, um, and actually has a problem around St. Petersburg now. So it looked like, it looked like Germany worked things out with France um, and said, France, go get the English dots and we're fine. Um, okay. Yeah, but Italy continuing to run in on Austria here um, means that although Russia loses Budapest, he can retake it. Well, no, Italy, Italy, um, Italy supported Bulgaria into Serbia. Right. That's interesting. While taking Bulgaria, which coast did he go to? It looks like he went to the east coast. He went to the east coast. Good. Okay, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's gonna be a pop. Right? The position might have looked a little too good there. Well, no, yeah. it also popped actually because Greece, uh, Greece will support it. Sure. If he can get Turkey to uh, later on support him into black, then yeah, that's that. yeah. Or you can support Turkey into black. Yeah, either one. Okay, here we go, Siobhan. Okay, so yep, yeah, Greece supports Bull taking Trieste. Denmark, oh, oh, that was Austrian. Trieste was Austrian anyway, so that's fine. Um. Oh, that has to be a misorder, yeah? Where? Yeah. Finland not doing anything? Um, you know, it could just be he's like, all right, I don't care what you're going to do. I'm not trying. To, I don't. I want you to move back into St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. I know Norway's going to support Sweden. I mean, I'd swing at Sweden anyway if it was me. You, make yeah, it well, no. you don't have anything to lose. Um, I'd make a swing, but yeah. Okay. 
Um, oh, uh, also, there was also uh, uh, attacking St. Petersburg here instead of Moscow, if you'd wanted to. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't. Does Germany get a build here? I don't think so. Although well, he badly needs one. Yep. Germany needs a build. No. Yeah. Just swapping Denmark and Sweden, right? Yeah. And then, so. and then Austria and Italy make um, a counting error here because they've put they've put Austria on three, but with no home center, would be far better mm. for Italy to take the dot here. Yeah, you're right. No, I'm sorry, they're only on two because uh, Italy is taking. Bulgaria. Oh, okay. So they did not make the accounting error. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. In fact, so then this was necessary to keep uh, Austria on two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, winter fleets are disappearing in the north and more army builds. So France is really, uh, France is. The French, the French position gets better. Yep. yep. Better and better. Oh, and Germany walks it back. Chris, this one's yours. Wow. So Germany says, you know what? I can't afford to be fighting Russia over here. I need to worry about France. Um, he's not wrong, <laughs> um, but he needed to find a way to do both. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a oh. fascinating Scandinavian situation, though, right? He makes it to the North Sea. He makes it to Sweden. Uh, Norway goes to St. Petersburg. Sweden goes to the Baltic Sea. Uh, what a mess. Uh, Italy... Swings up to the Tyrrhenian Sea here. Italy is fully on board with Turkey now, it would appear. Uh -huh. And uh, Smyrna to Armenia, looking to try and sneak back into Seb, force Russia to play some more defense. Yeah, poor, mm -hmm. poor Russia. This this game was all his on a plate, and then suddenly mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Yeah. Bulgaria, um, Bulgaria supported Khan to Black, uh, which didn't end up happening. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, hold on, there was one other thing of interest here. Um, the uh, Italy takes Trieste here. Well, yeah, so this was all guaranteed, actually. They said yeah. it perfectly. Yeah, okay, good tactics here uh, by a late breaking Audi, uh, Austria and Italy alliance. Yep. And then, all right, fall is, is this me or are you, Chris? I think still me. Okay. Um, uh, Germany guesses correctly in Sweden with the hold, although really any move would have worked there. Um, uh, supporting himself in Norway would not have helped. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Russia loses the Black Sea, trying to cover Seth instead of self-bouncing there, and gets Serbia popped. Uh, he should have, I mean, uh, objectively from this point, looked like Serbia was dead. So mm -hmm. I would have maybe self-bounced in Sev there. Um, but he does take a Warsaw. So... Yeah. And has no home center open for a rebuild. Yeah, he doesn't have any place to rebuild anyway, so he's stuck. Uh, France forces Ruhr, as you do, and you do. Germany has to, yeah, goes back to Denmark, uh, and England is out, right? No, oh, Liverpool doesn't support the move to Eddie. Yeah. This Liverpool support Eddie. Yeah, so that messed up. So England should have been out there. This shows, so this shows a, a lot of lack of trust between um, Russia and Germany here. I, my guess is that Joe in Germany was expecting Sweden to move to Bal uh, Bothnia rather than Baltic. Um, mm, yeah, yeah. And just to note, if it had, it would have been much better, I think, for Russia, um, yep. because now he doesn't have uh, a solid German ally. Yeah. Okay. And then I believe after winter, we are caught up with this game. So okay. quick glance at the build. Yeah. We should, uh, we should try and ca refrain from catching up with games if we can. Um, Good point. Yep. Um, because people are watching these streams, yeah. So I wasn't paying yeah. attention. I thought this game it was over. Okay. okay. Then let's um, let us pick another uh, game. Let's